On behalf of the Center for Extension Education, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you at this auditorium. Ladies and gentlemen, Yuta is honored to have with us today, Mr. Terry Winchester. Mr. Terry Winchester is an internationally renowned doctoratist and author. He has spent 37 years in search of the secret of happiness. His two published books, The Secrets of Happiness, is all in the mind and on your thoughts can upset you at the culmination of a lifetime of research and education by Terry to aid the awakening of mankind. Terry is also a renowned holistic keeper in South Africa and has astounded the audience with his telepathic record in training the African Kibati. Without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, let us extend our warmest welcome to Mr. Terry Winchester. was the founder of the Mind Frame Technique and author of the book, The Secret of Happiness, It's All in the Mind. Basically, the Mind Frame Technique is a process of holistic self-hypnosis. We can all sort of hypnotize ourselves. That's the same as meditation. It's the same as prayer. Go within, access the subconscious mind. The way it happened to me was, challenging spiritual principles like Jesus said take no thought for tomorrow what you eat or what you wear so I went to New York City with no money mm -hmm. and stood in the street of New York City and that was my wake up I felt free I felt peace now society says don't do that you'll die in the street I wanted to see if that was true I wanted to see if I could die or not Joseph's phobia was snakes, and he panicked just seeing a picture of them. If we roll it around your neck to help you get over that fear. Oh, 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 oh. 
What has happened to his fear? Now for the big test. It's all in the mind. It's so amazing. So got rid of the fear. Can be a snake handler now. They can get rid of it if they just choose to change their mind. <laughs> well done to all four guests who freed themselves of their phobia. <laughs> the only problem we have is the one you think we have. We separate ourselves from this moment and we're always waiting to be happy later. The sparrows are happy. Have you ever seen a depressed sparrow? <laughs> single problem you have will be solved by the time you walk out that door this afternoon. Would you like to hear how to do that? Yes. Because all our problems are only in the mind. There are no problems. Nothing real can be threatened. You, sure, you saw on that movie clip how people who were scared of snakes and bees, anyone else scared of snakes? Bees? Okay. By the end of today, you won't have that fear anymore if you just listen to what I'm saying and follow the principles. You can see there, on TV, these people had that fear. I then went to the back of the studio and did a session on them. And they came back, back and they were cured. A couple of them, we had to wait a couple of days to go and find a snake to see if we could wrap it around Joseph's neck. And you remember what he said there? The Felicia said the hostess, and she's our local Oprah, and she said, what if I wrap a snake around her neck? And he thought of that. And you could see in his eyes, and the blinking, and he said, I would die. 
Now, she just gave a suggestion. He thought of it, and he nearly, nearly had a panic attack there in the studio. But at the end, or well, the day later, when we entered the pet shop, after a session, he wrapped a snake around his neck. Now normally, if you go through the conventional channels of going to a psychologist, you'll go and sit with them for years, and then maybe you'll start to, you know, feel a bit more positive about yourself. But if these things are illusions, if they're only in your mind, surely you can change your mind and all your problems are gone, right? And that's what we're going to show you. With the click of your fingers, you can turn any problem into a solution. You can turn a stumbling block into a stepping stone. So, no matter how many stumbling block, blocks you might have, you now going to have that number of stepping stones. How about that? It's just a different attitude. It's just a means of pausing, stepping back, and remembering who you really are. Now, when we do anything in the way of changing our lives, we must look at it holistically. This simple chart here reflects the situation. I don't know if anyone's got a pointer that I can borrow, a laser pointer. But we have this chart which shows the levels of consciousness. Now I'm sure most of you have seen a chart like this. A very basic chart it came out in the 60s when they first started to measure your brain waves. And according to the EEG machine, electroencephalograph, we emit certain brain waves, okay? Now, from 40, 40 cycles to 14 there, in the top area, is the beta, left hemisphere, physical plane, bounded by time and space. Now, every one of you here in this room now is in the beta state, because you're looking at the chart, you're looking at me, and you're listening. So you're using your five physical senses, okay? Now, the key, the trick, with all our learning is done up there in, the, in the, that linear rote way where you've got to take your work and you've got to study it like a parrot, right? And then remember it for long enough to go and dump it onto the exam paper, okay? Now that's hard work. You're, you're struggling, right? And, and you keep putting this off. You think, yeah, I've got to study. No, well, I've got, I've got biology, I've got chemistry. I'm going to start tomorrow. And you keep putting it off. And the pressure builds, right? And it builds even more and more. And exams are approaching. And you're getting more and more stress. And in South Africa, where I have my hypnotherapy clinic, I get so many matric, call it matric there, but it's a GCE. Um, the GCE students come to me just before the exams, and some of them are suicidal. They can't take the pressure because they've built up all this pressure. What if they've studied well, they're clever, they've done well for all the years, but then the exams are coming and they say, what if my mind goes a blank? Now what's going to happen if you imagine that? You see, you're always going to get what you want, and you're always going to get what you don't want. So if you say, well, what if, and you imagine yourself Imagine your mind going blank. Um, then, what happens in the exam? Suddenly the subconscious mind says, oh, this is the exam. Remember your fear for your mind to go blank. And? Blank. Straight after the exam, what happens? Now the pressure's off. All the information comes back. And you say to yourself, but I knew that. And you did know it. But you see, you imagine the worst. <clears throat> Whatever image you hold before you, so shall it be. It's all in the mind. You've heard that statement. It's true. It's in the mind. So if you've got a problem, it's a misperception. It's a blockage in your mind. It's a faulty thought pattern. You see, we've all got different problems. That shows you that no problem is real. If there was one real problem, we all have the same problem. But everyone has a different problem. Some people are scared of snakes, some people aren't. I work with bees. And 
whenever I'm giving these talks, people around the world talking about the mind, everybody says, talk to us about bees. You know, they want to hear about bees. Now we know, especially in Africa, bees can kill you. We've got the African killer bees, right? And every year, many people die from bee sting. Horses die. All sorts of animals. Bees, bees going on the rampage and killing everything inside. So, I have to learn. So I love animals, I love nature, and I have to learn to talk to them. I have to learn how to hypnotize them. To remove them from these places they get into, in the roof and under the house. So that no one will no one can come and kill them. So anyone can do anything. Now most people just scare the bees. So they call me and I go there like this and I don't even get stuck. Because I'm not imagining getting stuck. And if you don't imagine it, it won't happen. Now look at a dog. A dog's a man's best friend, right? But more people die from dog attacks than snake attacks or bee attacks. That's man's best friend. And we know that a dog can kill you if it's angry and if it's cornered. But it's still our best friend. So you see, we don't have to have these fears. Because if you show fear to a dog, what's it going to do? It's going to pick up that fear. And you're both now going to, you know, wonder where you, whether you're going to fight or flight. And if you can run fast, you'll be lucky you might get away. Otherwise, that dog will attack you. So it's all in the mind. All fears are born of ignorance. There's not a single fear that anyone has ever had that is justifiable. You know, there's no fear, there's nothing where we can say, okay, that's what you should fear. Everything else, you don't have to fear but for this or that. One of the biggest fears is death, right? We fear the unknown, so we fear death. After you leave this room, you will not fear death anymore. Why? Because there is no death. Because you cannot die. Whether you like it or not. I'll try it. I'll challenge death. I went to New York City with no money to see if I'll crumple up in the gutter and die, like society was telling us. Now, why did I do that? Because my dad, you know, when I just finished school, I was in Rhodesia, and I just finished school, and then I had to go to the army, and we fought this meaningless war, and after the war, the Rhodesian war, uh, my dad said, right, son, now get a good job, work your way to the top like I did. That's what life's about. And I didn't know any better, and I said, okay. And I got a job literally underneath him. He worked for Lever Brothers. He's the director of Lever Brothers. And I worked underneath him, literally, his office was upstairs. But then I looked at my dad, and I loved my dad very much, but he was alcoholic. He got divorced. Now, he's telling me to follow in his footsteps. Now, that worried me. You know, I respected him, loved him, but... If I'm going to follow in his footsteps, I don't want to get, become an alcoholic. I don't want to get divorced. So I had to find out the meaning of life. What is this all about? My poor old dad struggled, and a lot of other people we know of are struggling. Your parents might be struggling. And they're now pushing you to do your varsity and, and study well, which is good, because they don't want you to struggle like they did. And that's fine. That's fantastic. And you're in one of the best universities in the world, yeah? Because this is the only university in the world, and I've lectured all around the world, this is the only place where you can do mind map, where you can do creative visualization, where you can do super memory. And I hope some of you came to the Mind Festival that was last weekend. Who was there? Okay, good. A lot of you were there. Those things that you learned there, how to use your subconscious mind more effectively, right brain thinking. That is going to make your days at, at university here just fly by. And you can achieve any goal simply by visualizing it. So I learned that by going around the world and visualizing myself in different places. And I was there. I could even make myself invisible through visualization. I was walking through New York the streets, and was, I looked up at Broadway, and I saw the Broadway show. Uh, there was two of them, Fiddler on the Roof, and another one was a Jesus Christ Superstar. 
And I thought, let me go and see that show. Now, I didn't have any money. Don't forget, I went around the world with no money to see if I'd die or not. To see if society was right and I'd crumple up and die. I didn't die. And I, I was alive for the first time in my life, in actual fact. I see the show, I think, I must go and see this. I'd like to see this. Now, I couldn't go and buy a little ticket from the lady at the kiosk and give it to the man standing at the door, like everyone else was doing, going to see that show. I didn't have any money. Now, I'm not going to sneak in because that's not right, but I just want to see the show. Now, I have learned that if you visualize something, if you imagine something, so shall it be. So I thought, right, I want to be inside this theater looking at the stage. So I pictured that. I closed my eyes for a few seconds, standing on the street. It was cold out, and I really wanted to get in there. It would be nice and warm, and I could see the show. And I just saw a picture. I can see that picture now, as I recall it. There I am, looking at the stage. Now, once I'd visualized that, I was already in that theater, mentally. My body was still outside. But now, what is my body going to do outside when my mind's inside? You know, it can't stay like that. So your body has to find where your mind is, catch up to where your mind is. So what my body did, when I paused and thought about what had happened, I just walked straight up to the guy collecting the tickets, and he's standing right in the doorway there taking tickets, and I'll say, excuse me, he said, sorry, and he let me in. Now that's not sneaking in. I just said, you know, excuse me, and he said, okay, and he let me in. <laughs> and suddenly I was sitting there looking at the stage, and my body had caught up to where my mind already was, and that's how the laws of universe, the laws of the universe work. And I started using that, like all the Rolling Stones and Joe Cocker and all the other shows, and I went on buses for nothing. You know, I just sit there. I didn't have a ticket, so I got no business with a ticket collector because I'm not a ticket holder. And no one ever threw me off, or threw me out. Okay, but we're not here to teach you to get the movies for nothing. <laughs> you can do it, but you know, if you've got money, then play the game. You know, pay the little man, pay the man at the door. He's got to, you know, he's just polished his shoes, and that's his job, and if no one pays him, he's not going to have a job. So play the game. But what I'm trying to illustrate here is that whatever you want is yours. I never went hungry in America. Everybody I met in New York City, I'd just be standing on the corner and the guy would say, well, you know, who are you? Where are you going? I said, I'm not going anywhere. I said, well, where do you live? I don't live anywhere. What do you do? I don't do anything. So what are you doing here? I'm just standing here. They said, how can you just stand here? I said, I don't know. My, on my feet. And he'd and he, he look at me and he'd say, gee, this is nice standing here. Yeah? I'm also just standing here now. You found the secret of happiness, just to be wherever you are. Because think about it, at any given time, right now, and included, everybody in this universe, whether you are Bill Gates, the Queen of England, or a beggar on the park bench, you either sit in, standing, walking, sleeping, or going to the toilet. Okay, the queen doesn't go to the toilet, but everyone else does. So they say. So everybody's just doing that. Until you drop dead. So I was standing there in New York City, and I was the happiest person on the planet, as far as I knew. And everyone I bumped into said, wow, we want that. How much does it cost? I said, it doesn't cost anything. And they said, well, how do you do it? So since then, and that was 40 years ago, since then I thought, well, okay, let me teach people to do this because this really works. We can be happy now. We can do anything we want. And if you want to pass your exams, because that's why you're sitting here, right? How do you do it? You visualize the end result, which means the universe then has to arrange everything so that can occur. Like the universe had to arrange everything so I could see shows for nothing, or travel on buses and, and trains for nothing. Because whatever you visualize is already a fact, it is your future. Because as soon as you get down to the alpha state here, which is when you go to sleep at night, you come down here to the dream state, this is the magical place if we want to show you how to access. 
there is no time and space. So we up here normally, there's the normal 21 cycles per second. Five physical senses, and as I said, we do all there now. We're going to do a little exercise just now. Take you down into this alpha state, the mental plane, no time and space, right hemisphere of the brain, the dream state. You go down here when you go to sleep at night. Thoughts and actions can come down into this level. So you can you can be sitting where you are and be in the alpha state. And if you were, you wouldn't be limited to information coming through the five physical senses, the taste, touch, sight, sound, smell. You would be receiving information in a more creative way. Now, if there's no time and space here, and that even Einstein told us that time and space is relative only to the physical plane. Here, in the mental plane, there's no time and space. That's why I could visualize myself even in a movie, and I've created the future, my body has to end up where my mind is gone. So whatever you want, whatever you're studying, visualize the end result. See yourself actually being this engineer, building a bridge. Whatever it is, with your hard hat on and you've got your plans and everyone's crowded around, the foreman and all that, and there you are and you're pointing and you could be like making a movie. You've just got to make a movie of what you want and that's your reality. You see, anything happening up here is started down here. What you think here manifests there. Whatever image you hold, the language of this level is visualization, mental pictures. So whatever you imagine will manifest. And it's, you can liken this whole thing to a movie. Now you know when you go to a movie, you sit in a movie house and there's a projector behind you, there's a film on that projector, and there's a light that shines through the projector, right? And then you see it displayed on the screen. Now those are only shadows on the screen. But now you go to this movie and you see Tom Cruise hanging from his bleeding fingernails on this cliff, and it's a 300 meter drop. And everyone in the audience goes, oh! <laughs> and you know he's not going to fall. You know he didn't fall. He's in the movie next door playing another role. And you know that it's only trick photography. He's actually standing on the ground. They just cut his feet off you know, in the shot. And you say, oh. and, he, and you nearly died. Let, let alone him nearly died. <laughs> and it's an illusion. And you know it's an illusion. But you get lost in the illusion, right? And then you, you go and see a horror movie. To be, in the old days, it used to be, you know, to have the man in the gorilla suit jump out the curtain. And you know it's someone dressed up. Not a real gorilla. Nowadays they've got dinosaurs. <laughs> they eat you. You see the dinosaur gobbling this actor up. You know it's computer generated, they're very clever these days. But everything in your life, those things that are frightening you are just the, the images, the movie that you've made and now playing on the screen of your, of your life. So this is, this is the screen that's gone, see, it's magic. <laughs> Digital projections, that's what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, This magician will come and see, look, no hands, it's going to work. <laughs> My wife will fix it. So, you can liken this whole thing to a, a movie. Right, now if this were a movie here, this here is the source. This would be the light bulb in the projector, right? Because that, you know, in the projector, the light bulb is common to any movie, right? Switch the light bulb off, where's the movie gone? Nothing happens, nothing plays on the screen. So the common denominator, the common factor in any movie is the light bulb of the projector. Then this would be the film, the patterning, which you put in front of the projector, which then projects onto the screen. And so whatever the film is, it will dance, the shadows will dance there and you will react to the shadows on the screen. Right? So if you're having certain things happening in your life here, you wrote the movie. You're the author of your own movie. 
You're the script writer. You're the main actor. And we're going to show you today how you can actually edit. You're also the editor. You can edit your own movie, your own life. And you can take out the bad bits. Because if you want to change what's happening here, it's no good throwing tomatoes at the screen. You know, or taking out a gun and shooting the, the villain on the screen. It's just a shadow. If you want to change that movie, there's only one way. Go to the projection room, take the film out, and rewrite the script. It's the same with your computer these days. You know, that's the screen, this is the, the code. And you know you can write any software you want if you know the code. And then it will play on the screen. If the, if the computer's not doing what you want it to do, it's no good shouting at the screen. You just mention something, your wife comes home and rather she'll fix it. But I mean, if you want to change what's going on there, get down to this level. And if you don't know the code of your computer, then you get some technician who does. But that's the only way to change your software, which is playing out in your life, change your mind at that level. But we're going to show you how you can use the language of the subconscious mind, which is very easy to use. It's simply mental pictures. Imagine it. There's nothing more important than your imagination. Einstein said that. He said, your academic achievements mean nothing. You are nothing unless you've got a good imagination. So that's the most vital thing for any student or any human being to learn. How to dream. See, it's the dream state. Whatever you dream up here will manifest there. This is just the light bulb. This is the spirit behind all things. Now, when we're working and changing our lives and curing our depression, anxiety, it's very e easy to cure depression. Very easy. I argue with doctors and professors and as many TV programs that I've been on, and I'm busy saying, to these professors, depression is due to a chemical imbalance in the brain. And they say, no, the chemical gets unbalanced and that causes the depression. They're putting the cart before the horse. If you're depressed, depression, another word for depression is disillusionment. You had this idea, it didn't work. So now you're disillusioned. So we all must get depressed for about 30 seconds. And they say, okay, well that didn't work which is the universe telling you that you're on the wrong track. That's fine. It's fine to know, to, to go and start do some, and do something and see later, okay, it's not that, because now you know what it isn't, now you know what it is. Reverse what it isn't and you've got what it is. So it doesn't matter where you're going, even if you're on the wrong path. You'll only know it's the wrong path by going down it. And then you hop onto the right path, or you actually turn it around, and that's what we're going to show you how to do. Turn that negative into a positive. So we have to, just pause, turn that around, and choose to see it differently. Because your, your disillusionment is the universe saying, wait a minute, you're on the wrong track. So, okay, when that first happens, you think, oh dear, now what am I going to do? That's okay, now what am I going to do? You're appealing to the higher self for an answer. And if you just pause with that, the higher self will say, right, this is what you do. Or go to sleep that night, pose the question in the evening, before you go to bed, go to sleep, and the subconscious mind will dream up what you're going to do. Because if you know not what to do, you'll know what to do. So the subconscious mind knows what to give you now, what information. So it's good to get depressed. Depression is the first step towards happiness. Without depression, you'll get nowhere. Because we'll carry on in the illusion and never know it's an illusion. We'll never become dis disillusioned. So depression is the best thing that could ever happen. So you pause and you correct your thinking. And if you just turn it around, you'll find yourself on the right path. So you see, nothing can go really wrong with anything. Life will teach us. You know, if you're driving on a road and it's all very smooth and everything is going fine, and you start to fall asleep, as you fall asleep, you'll go off the road and you'll hit those bumps and it'll jar you and think, oh, geez, whiz, and you'll correct your course. Now, it's no good getting out and cursing those stones at the side of the road, those bumps. Part of the municipality, I'm going to write a strongly worded letter to the Prime Minister. These bumps on the side of the road are no good. 
you need those bumps on the side of the road to wake you up so you can correct your course and now you have a smooth ride again. So once you have once you're on the track, it's easy. Except if it's the four o'clock jam we have again KL. But otherwise, it's a free flow. But even a traffic jam doesn't have to get you down. It's no good cursing, oh these damn cars and hooting your hooter. No one can move anyway. You might as well just sit there and listen to the radio or the little girl in the window can't find a she's pulling her face at you, pull her face back at her, and you'll have fun. And you'll have a wonderful experience instead of being upset by the traffic. So then you don't ever have any more traffic. There's plenty of cars around, but it's not a jam. I mean, here you actually call it a jam. We call it a traffic jam, but for you it's just that jam again, which is going to be there every every evening. No, it doesn't have to be there. Even if you, there's many cars around you, it can be a wonderful opportunity if you choose. Because it's your choice. Happiness is a choice. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to be miserable and blame everything, blame the government, blame the weather? See, nobody has ever done anything to you or to anyone else in the history of mankind. This is one of the more spiritual lessons we learn. We learn to forgive. And forgiveness means let go of the judgment that you made. Because you judge that all these people have done stuff to you. They haven't done it to you. People might be doing stuff and aiming it in your direction. But you don't have to take it. You can use that martial art, the keto. I'm sure some of you know what a keto is. Someone throws a punch at you, you just move out the way. You're not there. And they go flying and end up immobilized on the floor because you're not going to fight or flight. You're going to just not be there. So in the traffic jam, you're just not going to be there in the traffic jam. You're sitting in the car, but you don't have to be in the traffic jam. It's your choice. And if you're studying and you're worrying about things and the exams are coming, that worry is going to build, it's going to cause the, the anxiety, the anxiety is going to turn, turn into panic, you're going to have a panic attack, and you go to the doctor and you get your tranquilizers, which just numb you, and now you can't study properly. No, you don't need to go that road. Any good doctor will say, just relax. You say, the doctor, I can't relax. And that's true until you learn the secret. The secret's out. All your problems have been solved. It's there. Those words there on our banner here. Yeah? The secret is out. All your problems have been solved. You need to believe that. There are no more problems. There are plenty of projects, plenty of challenges, but no problem. You see, your, your mathematical problems that you've got to solve in, in your exam, it's not a problem, it's a challenge. I mean, people go and buy books on problems or challenges. You know, they sit there all day trying to work out these crossword puzzles. They buy whole books of these puzzles. You should be happy to sit down and work out the puzzles that you've given, you know, in your subjects that you study. It can be exciting. You can approach your studies knowing that there's no problem. This is a wonderful challenge. And all the information is available directly into your subconscious mind. Look, in, if you go to that alpha state, everything, because there's no time and space, there being no time and space, you automatically are in touch with everyone else's mind. You see, my mind is not, yeah, if there's no time and space, then where does your mind begin? Where does my mind begin? Where does your head? My mind stop here, and yours starts there. No, and we're not talking about the brain. You know, the brain is that hunk of meat weighing three pounds, you know, in your skull. We're not talking about that. That's just the hardware. We're talking about your 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 subconscious mind, where there's no time and space. So everybody's mind is in the same place at the same time. So you have access right now or at any time 
to the answers to any question that might be in your exam. So during the exam, we'll teach you when we do the full program, you can only, you can only introduce the basics now. On Saturday, we're doing the full eight-hour seminar in KL, so if you want to do that, we can arrange transport with limited space, but we can get you down there and uh, do the full eight hours for you. Um, but now, we can just touch on these five steps. Because if you can get into, well, the third step, if you're sitting in an exam and you get stuck on a question, all you've got to do is put your fingers together. This is the trigger that we install as a post-hypnotic suggestion. So you are saying to yourself, when we're installing this trigger, from now on, whenever you want to relax, you to do is bring the fingers together. You'll automatically relax. You can ask any question and you'll get the answer from your subconscious mind. Now, even if you haven't studied this particular subject, you can still get the answer because you're in touch with everyone else's mind. So you can put your fingers together and visualize Einstein during the exam. Close your eyes, leave, leave your eyes open. And Einstein will tell you the answer. And after the exam, when the teacher or the examiner looks at this and says, how did you get this right? Wasn't even the text in the textbook, it was a trick question. You say, well, Einstein. And they won't believe you. So they can't have you up to cheat. But you, the point is you can get any information that you want at any time, in any way, just by asking for it. Where did all this information come from? It comes from the universal intelligence. It's available to everybody there. How do you access it? You need to go towards sleep. So you need to relax. And we're going to do an exercise shortly. We're going to relax you and you're going to go down into this alpha state. And then while you're in the alpha state, we're going to get you to create your future. We're going to get you to visualize whatever it is that you want. And I guarantee it, I promise you, whatever image you hold before you will come about. And I didn't make that up. Remember, Jesus said that, Buddha said that, all the masters say that. Why aren't you doing it? Well, a lot of us are doing it, but we're visualizing negative things. And then we wonder why they come about, and we blame the government. So, we need to look at those bad habits. You know, a lot of people, if, if they don't like their job, they say, this job makes me sick. And it's usually on a Monday. And they've seen in any businesses, there's, there's a high absentee rate on a Monday because everyone's sick and tired of work. And literally, you don't feel too good in the morning, so you phone and you say, I'm, I'm, I'm sick. You know, and you don't say, I'm sick and tired of my job. The boss will be happy to gather, but the boss will get wind of that because you're never there on a Monday. Come Friday, you're full of beans. You know, you never get sick on a Friday because then, you're gonna, you know, the weekend's coming up. You don't want to be in bed over the weekend. You as fit as a fiddle on Friday and as sick as hell on Monday. Literally. So we make ourselves sick. Or we can make ourselves better, we can be healthy, happy, and wise. And another little trick we need to remember, and these are not little tricks, these are divine principles. So many of us worry about whether we've got enough money or not. You know, I can't afford this. I can't afford that. If you say that, what's going to happen? You're not going to be able to afford it. But if you just visualize yourself with whatever it is you want, so should it be. Lauren and I do a lot of flying around with the lecture around the world, and we usually go economy class, because, okay, you know, business class, five times as much, and you think, you think well, you know, it's a lot of money, you get, saying, you don't get, you, you get there a little bit quicker because you're in the front. <laughs> but other than that, um, but we, we said, I said to Lauren once, you know, sitting in these chairs on a long flight economy, I said, this is nonsense. Here I am teaching all around the world how you can get whatever you want. We now are going to go business class. Lauren said, we can't afford that. 
said, well, you know we can afford anything. But she said, yes, but it's going to be a waste of money because we can do a lot of other things with that same money. So I said, okay, well, I'm not saying we're going to pay for it. That's silly. Paying for business class. Same airplane. No, no, we're not going to pay for it. We're just going to go business class. And now we go business class on the ambulance. We don't cheat, they upgrade us to be in first class. Well, and it always works out. Occasionally we do economy, which we don't mind if we talk to trip and we're watching movies anyway. But it's a long trip, we want some business class on one of the legs at least. And that happens every time now. And what has happened sometimes, we bought our economy class ticket, and once we're traveling with my son and Nikki too, and there's three of us, we're going to the States. And uh, we just, we're in the economy queue, and, and we're just discussing it. So, well, look, this is a long, it's an eight hour flight, you know, let's go to business class. So I said, okay, give me the tickets. So I hopped over the little barrier, I went to where the, the first and business class check in, and I said to them, the guy standing there, change this to business class, please. He said, okay, a little round. There are. He just did it. Because I told him to. See, he's just doing his job. I mean, he, you know, he can, he can do that. He's got the authority to do that. But I didn't say, please, sir, do you think you could give us an upgrade, you know, complimentary, because we've got a sore neck or whatever it is. No, I said, just change that, please. <laughs> You're the boss. This is your world. You're not going to be hurting anyone. You're not standing in your, on anyone's toes. But Claim your birthright. You can do anything. You can have anything that you want. I visualized myself talking to students. A whole bunch of fresh faced, wonderful students. Zach Miller. Garrett. Because I want students to learn this. Because when I was a student, I wish I'd been taught these things. I learned them myself after leaving school, but the students can learn them. Wow! Their life is going to just fly. So I visualized that we were, we were lecturing in Australia, and someone came up to us, this uh, Chinese guy came up to us and said, look, um, I've got a company in KL, a small company, please come and teach my staff this, because I want my staff to be productive. I want my business to be successful. I said, sure, and he brought us over here. And we did, did the course, and then that led to someone else who wanted us now to do provincial insurance and Great Eastern insurance. And then we met that wonderful man, Dr. Tung Ling, who is the chairman of Utah. And this man was such a visionary where he's now teaching, which we had, he brought us over this time as well, we've been over eight times now in Malaysia, and he taught us, well he, he brought us over to teach this to students amongst the other creative things that you're doing like mind mapping, super learning, uh, speed reading, super memory. This is the only university in the world where you can learn that, and I'd like to give Dr. Fung Ling a hand for doing that. You are very, very lucky people. So take this opportunity. I'm introducing you now to a process that will help you with your mind mapping like that. You've learned all these things now. If you haven't learned them yet, learn them. They are. They're available. But when you're in an exam and you, you study a certain subject, put your fingers together, call up your mind map. It will come on the mental screen of your mind. You'll be able to read any bit of information off that mind map. That's a creative way of taking notes. It's no good using the old linear method where you, you just repeat it like a parrot. Visualize. To create your own creation. The mind map is your own creation. You've seen pictures of that. So do your mind map. Do your screen reading. Know that all you've got to do is pick up a book and hold the book. And that book is a ticket to the author's mind.
subconscious mind, remember. We all have the same subconscious mind. So that book is a ticket to their mind and you now know that you are in touch with all the information that they know and that they wrote the book about. You're in touch with it. So then you can just pick up the book and you now are connected. Now, you know, if you get really good at it, you won't even have to open the book, but that's the advanced course, okay? But at least now, as a beginner, you know that there's the information all in your hands. So all you've got to do is pick it up and you'll thumb through it, you'll open to certain pages, and you'll read what's in that book, and it'll all make sense. It's like doing a jigsaw puzzle, right? I can give you a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, which I'm sure you've all done, but nowadays it's all computer generated racing cars, and you don't do jigsaw puzzles anymore. But you know what they are. I can give you a jigsaw puzzle, a thousand pieces, you put all the pieces out, and I don't show you the picture on the box. And I say, do the puzzle. So you pick up one piece, or oh, I don't know what that is, put it down another, oh, I don't know where that goes. It's going to take you a very long time to do that puzzle. You'll eventually do it. It'll take you months. But as soon as I show you the picture, there's the picture of a river, or trees, whatever it is. You pick up one piece. Ah, oh, that's a bit of the river. Another piece, that's a bit of a tree. It goes there. And suddenly it all starts to fall into place, right? And it's very easy to do that puzzle if you can see the overall picture. So when you are studying something, you're becoming an engineer, whatever it is, what is it? Why are you studying to be an engineer so that you can you know, build bridges, say, a civil engineer? Why do you need to know all the stuff about bridges? Because you've got to put the right mix of concrete there. Because otherwise, you know, you build your bridge and the first car that comes across the whole thing falls down. Then you're going to be so, you know, you've got to learn this stuff. But if you know that end result, that you're going to learn, you know, how to mix concrete or how the mathematics of the span and all that exciting stuff, and you've picked up this book, and you say, I've got it. This is, this is, they told me, this is the textbook. This is what I'm going to learn, and I've got it. It's in my grasp. Now when you open it, it all fits into place. It's because it's like seeing the picture, the end result. It's like with that jigsaw puzzle. You can see where you're going with it, what the ultimate goal is. So you must formulate the ultimate goal. Don't just come to, to university and say, you know, what, what must I study? And they say, well, you're doing this course and you study this, study that, study that. That's not good enough. That's going to make it whole, the whole thing laborious. You're going to struggle. Look at the end result. I want to do mind power stuff. Because I was dyslexic. I still can't spell. I don't have to now. My computer does. Or my wife picks me up if I get a sentence structure wrong. So, but I've still written a book. I can't write books. So I've written two books. I'm on the third book. I don't know how to write a book. But I've got this exciting message to give. So I put it down in words. I know what it means. Lauren will say, oh, that's all wrong, it's all past tense or past principle, this and that. What are you talking about? I don't... <laughs> Is this what I want to say? She says, I've got what you want to say. And she puts it in the right English. And there's someone else reading that, they read, they read one or two words and, wow, they've got it. And people come up to me and they say, wow, your book was amazing. And to me, I said, was it? Because I don't know how to write. He said, yes, you, you, I was with you in Canada when you went through the border. Bus. And all these things happen to you. I was right there with you. You know what a thrill that is for me? Because I don't know how to express myself in words, so I thought. I don't know how to talk in public. I was so shy at school, I had one friend. And he was such a wimp that I was too embarrassed to be to sit with him. So at break, he used to sit on that side of the field, and I'd sit on that side of the field. And he was my friend. And I'd sort of now and again say, OK, how are you doing? <laughs> because I was so shy. I, mean, I couldn't talk to anyone. I, so I had imaginary friends. And they wouldn't even talk to me. You know? That's how shy I was. And I thought, I'm going to do something about this. And then, just as another little example, I saw Butch Whitley. Now, he was the main 
guy at school. You know, you always got that main dude. You know, they, oh, they, they you know, they, you know, they, whatever it is that you're supposed to have, they've got it, right? Whether it's a boy or a girl, you know, you look up to them. And there's old Butch, and I thought, gee, you know, Butch would walk around the field at break and his fans trucking behind him, you know. He was the hero. And I thought, why can't I? Why can't I get to know Butch? And I just visualized it. I went to sleep and I imagined it. The next day I bumped into him in the corridor and I said hi. And he said hi back. And we started talking and we just clicked. So I went from the, the second biggest wimp in school to the second, to the two I see to the main guy. I was suddenly a hero or you know, the second best hero. Just by imagining it overnight. I imagined hypnotherapy practices and I got them. These things are in the book. I can't tell you all these stories. We read them on the internet. When I was practicing, I was, I was so young practicing hypnotherapy because I just took over this practice without any qualification. So most people didn't worry about that and they would, they would cure themselves of asthma, panic attacks, whatever their problems were. They would come and see me. I would just help them to relax, see things differently, and they would cure themselves. Because everybody cures themselves. I can't cure anybody. They can change their minds to be free. And one or two people would say, well, you're very young. I mean, you know, I was 21 years old. Where did you qualify? Or what have you studied? I said, I haven't studied. Didn't qualify. And that's a problem for some people. You know, they're going to put their life in your hands. And, you know, you're not qualified. So I visualized a string of letters behind my hand. One thing led to another. And before I knew it, I was in London. I went to London. This was the only place that I felt you could qualify for this sort of thing. I looked at the yellow pages. I looked at one of the hypnotherapists. I phoned him up. I said, I'm from Rhodesia. I'm a hypnotherapist. He said, great. Come along to our meeting tonight. We would love you as a foreign representative. We form in a council to combat a bill that's going through Parliament. And we want to, you know, we want to now form this council. So I went along to that meeting. That night, I became the founder member of the British National Council of Psychotherapists. And now I can practice anywhere in the UK or Europe. On the strength of that, it's still going today, 40 years later. I visualized myself doing that. I was in the right place at the right time. You see, that's what happens. You've created the future. The whole universe gets behind you. And this is how things will start to happen. And when you, so you start from the right angle. You start by looking at the overall picture of the jigsaw puzzle. Then all the pieces fit into place. You've got to formulate that in your mind. Who are you? Where are you going with this? Then the rest is easy. You'll be led to the right place at the right time. And every one of you here is in that right place at the right time. Because you're learning something now that's going to take all the stress out of your exam. Right, at this point, are there any questions? Anybody disagree with what I'm saying? So if you're not disagreeing, that means you are agreeing, right? So every one of you here in this room, including those talking amongst themselves, everyone in this room is agreeing that by just relaxing, which we're going to do now, I'm going to show you how to do it so you've got no excuse if uh, you don't know how to do it, you have to do it now. That if you just relax and you visualize something, you're going to get it. Everyone agree? Wow, that's fantastic. Everyone agrees. So we're going to do it now. And you're going to visualize what you want. Now you might say to yourself, well, I don't really know what I want. Well, you do. You know you want to graduate. That's one thing. And um, so you start, wherever you start, it doesn't matter. But you see yourself graduating. You see the end result. So you see yourself getting your scroll, going on the stage, and, you know, that wonderful feeling. That means it's already happened. It's only a matter of time for that to manifest on this level. Just you visualize it there, it will eventually manifest when the time is right. On the level is time, on the beta level. So we're going to get you to 
visualize you being qualified? Can you all conceive of that? Can you imagine that? Anyone got a problem imagining the end result or the spell that they're having here in the Anyone got a problem picturing your success? You've got no problem, right? So we're going to do that, and that is guaranteed. Every one of you, and all, all, you all want to graduate, right? Anyone not want to graduate? <laughs> Some people, you know, would like to be professional students. <laughs> so you all want to graduate. So we're going to get you to relax, and you're going to visualize that end result, what that means to you. That means you have graduated, right? Answers jump out at you. Because that's what happens when you really learn something, right? Have you noticed? You're reading something and you think, wow, look, I know that. You see, the only thing you'll ever learn is what, you've already, what you already know. Because we know everything there is to know forgotten what we knew. So it's a matter of reminding you, bringing it back into your mind, or remembering, becoming a member again of this knowledge. You're discovering what you've forgotten. Discover means take the covers off. It's already there. Everything you want to know to get your degree is already there. It's in the textbooks. You've just got to play the game and pitch up. You know, and open the books and play with this, and, but do it in that creative way. When you already know this, you already have qualified, now let's see that. I mean, I find myself watching Discovery Channel or the History Channel that you get these days, you know, very, very good programs. And, and I watch, I look at how they're building these big machines and building bridges, and I'm fascinated. And I can't get more, I can't get enough of these programs. And I'm learning so much. You know, and you've all got this now. And all, don't forget, if you want any answer that you don't know, you just got to Google it. I mean, you're so lucky. We had to go to a library and look for a reference book. If we were lucky, we'd find one that might be quite close. You just Google it. Now, you see, this whole thing with the internet and Googling, that's just a very crude aspect of who we really are. Imagine if you could, this is the, this is the true mental internet, internet, this has all the information, we know how amazing Google is and how much, you know, you get any type of information you want. Imagine using your universal intelligence, you just got to know how to ask, and it's the same as Googling it, but a million times, a million gigabytes more powerful, to, and you'll get the answer. You can get the answer to any question by uh, using this internal internet, the power of your own mind. Visualize it. That's how you Google it. You imagine the end result, all the necessary information <coughs> come flooding into you, and then you look at the textbook and you see, oh yes, and if you can relate to it now because we're talking about something you've already attuned to. Okay, so it's enough talking now. We want to actually do the relaxation. So now, that's the key. But funnily, funnily enough, if I said to you now, relax your toes, you're going to move it. The arrows already moved their toes. Look, look at everybody moving their toes. I said, relax them. And you're moving them. You see, that's the on left brain, it's the George Bush of your consciousness. It's an idiot, it's the village idiot. I said, relax your toes, and you're going to move them. You see, the left brain hasn't got a clue how to do something. If I asked you to stand up, if I asked you, how do you stand up? Who knows how to stand up? <laughs> Nobody, 
now you're stuck forever. You're going to sit in that chair. <laughs> Nobody knows how to stand up. <laughs> but a simple thing like standing up and you don't know how to do it because the conscious mind is the village idiot it doesn't know but your subconscious mind does so if I asked you to stand up and you accepted my suggestion you would automatically stand up without giving it a single thought and that's a miracle how many muscles must work how many messages go through the nerves to the muscles to the brain just to stand up just to walk and put one foot in front of the other. That's a miracle. The subconscious mind knows how to do it. So just as you can spring into action on a suggestion that I might give you, you can relax on a suggestion that I'm going to give you. Because this is what we want now. We want all of the stress and the tension. Because a lot of you, a lot of us, a lot of human beings, all human beings, are stressed one way or another. And if you're stressed, it means there's part of your body keyed up, ready to fight or flight, wrestling with this, ima this imagined monster. And the monster might be some sort of fear, it might be fear that you won't pass your exams or whatever it is. And that burns up the energy. They've proven, the yogis have proven, that a few moments of mental anxiety consume more energy than a whole day's physical labor. You can get your worker working in the garden, swinging the pickaxe all day, whistling a tune. At the end of the day, he's fitter than when he started. As opposed to the neurotic housewife or the stressed businessman or student getting up in the morning, oh my God, it's another day, what am I gonna do? And your, your whole allocation of energy for the day that you've got by going and sleep and charging the batteries now gone. Now you're going to drag yourself through that whole day. And you know that feeling, right? You're trying to catch up to yourself. And you just, you're not making any ground, you're getting worse. So to be able to have a good sleep or a power nap, which we're going to do now, which means to go to sleep but stay awake at the same time. And that's where the power comes in. That's where Einstein got his revelations from. Where Isaac Newton, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, any one of these great figures from our history, Napoleon, he was asked one day, where do you get the energy, where do you get the strength to, and how, do you, how can you read the enemy's mind to defeat them in these battles? And he says, I just get it while I'm, I'm sleeping on the horse, on horseback. And he used to sit on horseback and close his eyes. People thought he was sleeping. But he was just in the alpha state plan in his battle, where Einstein dreamed up his answers. You can dream up any answer you want. We all are, we have the same brain as Einstein. Einstein didn't have a bigger brain than anyone else. He just used it more creatively. That's what you can do now. We all got the same brain. We all got the same potential. We all connected with universal intelligence. So, I'm going to say to you, your toes now relax. We're going to start in a minute, so I'm just giving you a rough outline. Your subconscious mind will relax your toes. You don't have to worry about how that's done. None of your business. Okay. None of the business of the left brain. Put that aside. Let my suggestions become yours. Because I know what to say in the right sequence, in the right order, and there's relaxing music, it sets the tone you to go towards sleep, but you're completely awake. You can get up and walk out in the middle of it if you want. But we don't want anyone to do that because it'll disturb the people alongside you. But it's, it's, you're in complete control. I am a hypnotherapist, and we can call this hypnosis if you want, but all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. You're going to hypnotize yourself because that's what all hypnosis is. But once you're in that relaxed state, I'm going to give you very powerful suggestions, simple, simple yet powerful. I'm going to remind you that you are complete and whole within yourself. Right now. I'm going to remind you that nothing real can ever be threatened. And that will bring true. Every cell of your body will say, wow, whoopee, hallelujah, I always felt that this must be true. 
Are you going to be recognizing, recognizing these things that you've forgotten? I'm going to remind you that your point of power is right now. And you're going to remember that. Wow, that's true. I'm going to remind you that whatever image you hold in your mind right now is your reality. And you will know that's true. And then you know, I'm going to get you to imagine, to create your reality. Visualize your goal. And so shall it be. Right, any questions? Okay, we're going to do it now. So we just need some relaxing music. We're going to turn the lights down a little bit. So you just sit straight in your chair. When we do the course on Saturday, we're going to have carpets and you can lie on the floor and we're going to really go deeper. But we're just going to get you um, into that first level of alpha. Okay, so if you've got something on your lap, you put it down so it doesn't slip and fall. And so you just sit with your feet flat on the ground and cross your legs. Have your hands just on your lap. And sit straight in your chair. Don't slouch. Make it fine to keep a straight line. And begin with three deep breaths. Your own time, breathe in deeply. Hold it for a moment. As you exhale, let go and relax. Every sound.
part of the body into a deep state of relaxation. Let go. Breathe, becoming deep and more rhythmic as you go deeper and deeper with each breath that you take. Let's go. Let go. Back and shoulder muscles now relax. Deep residual tensions that may have been there for many years now melt away. The wave of relaxation flows down the arm through the elbow. Forearms relax. Hands, fingers. now going to create your future 
on the count of three, visualize yourself as you would like to be. See where you're going. See who you are. See yourself being successful, happy, healthy. One, two, three. Right now, visualize yourself having achieved your goal. See, feel it. Look how nice it is to be successful. You've always known that you had this potential. You've always known that this is who you really are. Visualize yourself in the future just as you would like to be. The image you hold now is your reality. From now on, every step you take, every thought you have is in accordance with Build on this image, change it, modify it as you go along. But right now, enjoy your success. See yourself happy, prosperous, healthy. This is your birth. Dare to dream your dream. Take a few more moments as you visualize your future.
it's growing, it's a process. You don't have to do anything, it'll grow all the time. You can water it, weed around and everything. But a few days later you go, it's still not there, and I say, look, it's growing underground, it's a process. But then you dig it up to see how it's doing. And obviously you're going to destroy that seed. But that does not mean that cabbages won't grow. So you've got an hour, we've planted the seed. We just need to water it, nurture it. But what we, there's only one thing that can stop that coming about. Whatever you visualize there is your future, unless you change it. And what will change it? Your doubts. If you doubt and you think, oh no, it can't be that easy. Well then, it won't be that easy, then it'll be hard. Right, so what we need to do, and this is what we do in the seminar, step number two, or step number three actually, is the finger trigger, that whenever a doubt comes up, all you've got to do is click your fingers, say white frame, and that negative black frame image, and put it in the black frame, the negative, turn it around, and tell the subconscious mind, thanks God, no thanks, I want success, I want happiness, I want peace. So the doubt will never get a foothold. So your doubt will never whittle away your dream. So you started the dream, you started to see, we need to nurture that, we need to show you how to do that. So in the complete mind frame technique, there are five steps. You've done the first step. You can come on Saturday, we can we do that again, and then we go into the second step. The second step is creating a mental mirror. The black frame, which is the one side, denotes the negative, the past. So you put your fear, you put your anger, you put whatever it is you don't want. It's like making a movie of your life. So the other day you got upset with your mother and you shouted at her and you know you put that scene, that negative scene, that reactionary pattern in the black frame. Once you've captured it, you're telling the subconscious mind, see that bit, I don't want it. It's in the black frame. Then you step back and you look at it and you see, well, what's going on here? You shouldn't have really shouted at your mother. She's only trying to help, whatever it is. You turn the mirror and you visualize the perfect scenario. It's like a director of a movie saying, right, you're now going to remake that scene, but now you are a master, you're a loving, kind, successful person. How would you see that? And you see it in the white frame. You've now cured your problem. You've cured your anger, your resentment. Because if you don't get rid of anger and resentment and all these negative emotions, that, that becomes your cancer later on in life. It becomes your asthma, it becomes your dis-ease. Whatever your Achilles heel, which is your weakest organ that you inherited from your parents, that will play out as soon as you feel stressed. There is no reason for you to feel stressed when you know how to use your mind more effectively. Right. So that's the second session, turning the negatives into the positive. The negative comes back, click your fingers and it's gone. Yes. all these other thoughts. You're busy, you know, I'm guiding you, which is easy, but if you're doing it on your own too, your mind's going to dart off, you know, what are you going to have for breakfast? You want to make that phone call and your leg hurts, you know, all those distractions. Step number five takes care of those. Step number five is a meditation, a fashion meditation, where you learn to follow your breath, the Buddhist meditation, and every thought that arises you label it irrelevant, you see, because that thought that pops up, you, it's only a suggestion, the subconscious mind says, think of this, this is what you normally would do, or be distracted or whatever. You say thanks but no thanks, and you label it irrelevant. So you learn to let go those disturbing thoughts, those distractions. Now, do you You relax before you study. So you count, you go 10 to 1, 
and you visualize your ideal place. We set it all up so it's automatic. So you're automatically in that relaxed state. Then you visualize in the, in the white frame. It's nothing but black frame. You go straight to the white frame. You're now going to study for so many hours. And just by the way, when you study, you should never study for more than 45 minutes. You know that. Your mind can't effectively absorb. So don't sit there for three hours and think, oh, nothing went in, and now I'll start tomorrow. You know. um, 45 minutes, 15 minute break. You study in modules. Um, and then you pace yourself. How many modules do you need to do in a week? If you need to do six, or you need to do ten, that's two a day, leaving the weekends off. So um, by just working out, pacing yourself, you've got three weeks to the exam, you're going to do ten modules a week, and then when you're in a good mood, you do more modules, so you get them under, you get them under your belt, and then um, you, you're ahead. So you can pace yourself, if you're behind, you can work on a weekend, and get catch up to a few modules. I just threw that in, it's very important. So you prepare yourself to answer your question more directly. Prepare yourself by going into Alpha. So I'm going to now do two modules on chemistry. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to remember this information any time in the future simply by putting my fingers together. Okay? So now you've prepared your mind, now you open your eyes and you do your study. Now if it's only 45 minutes, you'll find that it's easy. You might think after half an hour, oh this is boring, you know, I'd rather go and watch TV. So another 15 minutes, and then it's under your belt. It's done deal, signed, sealed. And if you know mind mapping, you do a little mind map, put that on top of that session. When you come to revise, you bring your mind map up, you install it in the subconscious mind during the exam, you do that, it comes back to you, the mind map tells you everything that you learned in that 45 minute session. There's a lot of little things that we can go into and train you to do this. I'm just giving you a shortened version. So you prepare yourself before, and you're telling yourself that this information is accessible with the finger trigger whenever you wish it to come in. And then you automatically, by practice, you automatically have less distractions anyway. So don't worry about those. Let those go, go and keep them coming back to your point of focus. And if it's a 45 minute session, you'll find this easy. Okay, so it's a good bit of practice, but remember, you're using your mind more effectively. You're doing everything 10 times faster, and there's 10 times less stuff. Um, you, you, you're going to have all this information literally at your fingertips. The next step, that the fingers triggers the third step, the fourth step, is the glass of water technique, which is what it implies. You drink a glass of water. So before the exam, you can do it the night before, or the morning before, or just before you walk into the hall, you go and get a glass of water. You get your glass of water, you charge the water up. I don't know if you know of Professor Emoto's work on water, how you can bless water, charge it up, send thoughts into water, it receives that charge. So you've got a magic tonic now, which is going to really you know, make you feel good. So, but you drink the water and you say the key words, this is all I have to do to remember everything that I've learned. Blood, 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 empty glass down, done. You now turn around, you go to the exam room, you're sitting down, you know that you're going to remember everything. So you're in the right frame of mind, all the information flows. If you get stuck on something, you put your fingers together, and it pops into your mind. And ask Einstein if you want to hear it tell you. Okay. So, that's the fourth step, the water trigger. The first step is the meditation that you use just to deepen everything when you've got time just to sit. But it does form part of the complete technique. So those are the five steps. If you can come and do it on Saturday, you'll have this for the rest of your life. Once you've learned this, it's yours. If you can't get there, you can work out something. Um, May could work out something where we can come back and teach you all of the college here. But you need to learn it's a very simple, powerful method of using your mind more effectively. We've got a, a CD kit there, it's all in the box, which is CDs and DVDs of the book. So a whole bunch of students can get that and can share it. And you can go through it that way. You can always email me or Skype me, wherever I am in the world. We're based in South Africa, but we travel a lot. Um, we can guide you through that. 
So, any questions now on this basic five step technique? Any other questions? Thank you for your question. Okay, so you all understand what we're talking about. Is this something you want? No. Okay, fine. <laughs> you need to... You, this is something you need to do for whatever. We teach this to, to sports people. If you're going to be the top of your sport, you've got to use your mind, right? This is, this is all in the mind. So it's just sports. You use this technique. If, you, if you've got an ailment, if you've got relationship problems, you use this technique. If you've got mental blocks on money, you use this technique. Because it's your, only your thoughts can upset you. Only your thoughts can hurt you. Only the mind can be sick. A mind, a sick mind, or a distorted mind, or a diseased mind, or a disordered mind, will cause your body to manifest any ailment. Well, the, the different ailments according to your Achilles heel, which is your weak thought. Right, any other questions? Yes, at the back. Um, when I enter my, uh, meditation, right, um, I enter uh, until a stage where I can't even think a thing like you, like you are falling asleep, but you are not asleep. Until that stage, right, you can't, like, I can't follow, like, in, in case someone is talking to me, I can't consciously think about it. So, that, what actually what's this? Is that, is it? Almost like, um, self hypnotized or no? Sorry, I didn't get the full question. <laughs> <laughs> I was <I'm> falling asleep. <laughs> uh, was that during this session you're talking about, or are you talking generally? Just someone can repeat. Was it now? No, because myself, I'm practicing meditation every day. So, um, Mostly, I wish a stage like there's no thought at all. Yeah. Um, so actually, at that moment, no thought. Is it um, self hypnotized also? Yes. Um, that point of no thought, which is a very important point, which is the delta state. Um, when you get to that delta state, that's the ultimate goal: is to have no thought. If you stop thinking, there's nothing you will not know. So that's what the benefits of meditation. So you you practice that to deepen your, your state and where you've got no thought, and then you come back into thinking, you go from the delta into the alpha, and you do your thinking now, you do your visualizing, you do your creative work, uh, picturing, visualizing what you want, and then that will manifest in the physical world. So your meditation is just to deepen it, but in meditation you're not doing anything, you know, but you are tuning in to the ultimate goal, which is self-realization. You see, if we, if we all wanted to go home, back to our source, we must just stop thinking. Let go, let God, not my will, thy will, and we're back at the peaceful state. So that's the ultimate goal of meditation. So we're putting meditation in here, to keep that in mind, that the ultimate goal is to be here now, not where you think you are, have no thoughts, but we're still going to have our thoughts, and we're still working in the thought realm, so let's have controlled thoughts, let's have creative thoughts, let's have productive thoughts, and let's have a productive life. So it's up to us. Whatever you think, so shall it be. No one else is to blame. You can no longer blame the government, okay? You can no longer blame your weather. You can no longer blame your teacher for not teaching you properly. You've got the tool. You are the master of your mind and body. You've got to see things the way you want to see it and so should it be. Any more questions? Yes. I understand the Right, so the question.
question is, how can we access Einstein's mind? How can we access other minds? If there's no time and space, and that's what Einstein says, then all our minds are one. Jung termed it the collective unconscious. So we all share the same mind. It's like the internet. Any bit of information is available there. But if you don't go and Google that piece, you're never going to know that piece. You know, but it's still there. So, and you, you get in into the mind or into the computers or the hard drives of all these other computers all around the world. That's what the net is. They're all these different computers linked and there's, it's not, it, it's still limited. There's limited information on the internet, although it's so vast, you know, we can say it's almost unlimited. But with your mind, we all share the same mind. We draw from the same collective unconsciousness. So whatever you visualize, it's like, an example is if you go to the ocean with a, with a vessel, maybe a Coke bottle, and you fill that Coke bottle with water, you've now got that water in the shape of a Coke bottle. Someone else takes a cup, and they get it in the shape of a cup. So whatever your vessel is, whatever your question is, that will, you, you will get that answer. But there's endless, you'll never diminish the ocean. The ocean is, is un, you know, well, it's not limited, well, it is limited, but, you know. So there's unlimited information. We've just got to ask and we'll see. So every bit of information you ask for, the question creates the answer. If you don't have a question, how can you get the answer? So your key is to question. Who am I is the big question. If you can ask, who am I? And then you think, well, I'm a South African. No, no, that's not who I am, that's my body. Who am I? Well, I'm a male. No, no, that's only in this incarnation. And so whatever you come up with, that's not who you are. That's who you think you are. So eventually you say, who am I? And then you realize the I am. The I am that I am. I am at all. Now you get into the spiritual side, God consciousness. So that universal consciousness is God consciousness. We are all in the image of God. Every one of us can channel or tune in and be an instrument of God. And God's unlimited. So, you know, so Einstein was limited in his expression. He did certain theories and that. He asked those questions, he got it in that angle. Michelangelo would do it in his sculpture. Um, Leonardo, da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci did it with his painting, the Mona Lisa. Um, you know, he captured the, the rhythms, the beauty, the harmony, the sounds, and, and Mozart and Beethoven captured it. They went to that same state that Einstein went to. But Beethoven represented it in, in sound. Whereas Einstein represented that same truth in mathematical formula. Or someone, an artist, caught it on the canvas. And you will capture it in your way. And so we've got to each sound our own note. You see, now this is the important thing. When you go into the alpha state and you start your meditation, you start to loosen those thoughts, you start to realize who you really are. And right now, every one of us in this room is this incredible being of life, love. Every great master said that, whether it's Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, he's the opponent, whatever. Whoever, they talked about the same thing. There's one way. And that one way is to go within, find out who you really are, and shine your light. Now, if you can go into your exams and your studies, knowing that deeper spiritual aspect of your being, how can you go from? Everything will flow. You'll become the master. So, take that with you. Remember that we... I'm happy and willing to, to teach you the whole thing if we can work out a way of getting together. Um, we've, got, we've got some CDs there because we're going home next week. Um, they were reduced from 65 ringgit, I think now 50 ringgit, but if you get another one free, the bar one get one free. We just need to clear those. They just help you with the basics. But if you want the full thing, it's in the box. Or you can come and do the seminar just make it so. 
Put up your hand if you want to do the full seminar, one way or another. I don't, I'm not saying this Saturday. Who wants to do it? Who wants to be the master of their lives? Who wants to solve all their problems with a click of the fingers? Come on, we need more hands. Come on. Okay, well done. You've put up your hand. If you put up the hand, your uni the universe will say, right, you want it, it's yours. So I'm ready to do my part. Your part is to put up your hand, which you've done. So, thanks very much. Thank you.